Welcome back to the Kennedy Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Allison, and today is an episode that's a little out of the ordinary for us, but I thought it would be a fun little addition to the podcast, so we're going with it. But first, let's start with our In the News segment. we got a lot of news today. Big news story of the past seven days. First up, Jean and Mark Shriver have published a new children's book, Pairs of People, and it focuses on the themes of teamwork and collaboration and is currently a number one new release on Amazon in the U.S. That is via today.com. So pretty cool. Next up, and I learned about this from Carrie Kennedy's Instagram, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are going to receive the Ripple of Hope Award honoring RFK's legacy this year. It says the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Organization will honor the Sussexes later this year at a gala in New York City. This is from Town & Country magazine. When I saw this, I clicked the comments, and if you want to read some pretty dishy comments, then head on over to Carrie Kennedy's Instagram because people have opinions on this. And last but certainly, in my opinion, not least, via deadline, John F. Kennedy docuseries is in the works from director Ashton Gleckman and Radical Media. Now, if you remember, Ashton was on the podcast a while back. We did an Instagram Live together, and then we did a podcast episode where he talked all about this project. If you haven't listened to it, go back and listen because it's really neat, and it'll fill you in completely on this entire project. But I want to read a little bit about Radical Media, who he's teamed up with. From this Deadline article, it says that this is the latest presidential documentary for Radical Media, which developed and produced Ronald Cherno's Grant for History, is working on Lincoln and Theodore Roosevelt, both executive produced by presidential historian Doris Kearns Goodwin, while Leonardo DiCaprio and his Appian Way production company is involved in the latter from the A&E Networks channel and is also in production on FDR in the same network. So huge news for Ashton to team up with Radical and for Radical to team up with Ashton. And if you follow me on Instagram, you already know this, but I am completely honored to be a consulting producer on this project, along with Lawrence Hawes and Andrew Cohen. And it's just an amazing, amazing project with amazing people. And Ashton is seriously incredibly talented. So be on the lookout for this. And I'll keep you updated with it, of course, because I promise you guys, it's like the best Kennedy documentary I've ever seen. It truly is so beautifully done. It dives into his life so much more than anything I've ever seen. And I'm just proud to be a part of it. Now for our recommendation segment. Of course, then we would uh, recommend it. Because we talked about it, I'm going to recommend and put a link in the description of this episode to Gene and Mark Shriver's new children's book. I'm going to buy it for my kids, and I hope you'll buy it for a special kiddo in your life, too. Now for our inspiring clip of the week. One of the inspiring notes. One of my favorites. I have inserted it before, but it's literally so good. I feel like none of us can hear it too much, so I'm going to put it in again. It's part of RFK's Day of Affirmation Address, which is the tiny ripple of hope speech. It was delivered at the University of Cape Town in June 1966. The speech is a celebration of freedom, a value at the core of the work done by RFK Human Rights, founded in October of 1968 which that all kind of links back to the Ripple of Hope awards that we talked about. I also have done an episode on this before, so go back and listen to that if you haven't already. But anyway, here's the clip. We stand here in the name of freedom. At the heart of that Western freedom and democracy is the belief that the individual man, the child of God, is the touchstone of value. And all society, all groups and states exist for that person's benefit. Therefore, the enlargement of liberty for individual human beings must be the supreme goal and the abiding practice of any Western society. The first element of this individual liberty is the freedom of speech, the right to express and communicate ideas, to set oneself apart from the dumb beasts of field and forest, the right to recall governments to their duties and to their obligations. Above all, the right to affirm one's membership and allegiance to the body politic, to society, to the men with whom we share our land, our heritage, and our children's future. Hand in hand with freedom of speech goes the power to be heard, to share in the decisions of government which shape men's lives. Everything that makes man's life worthwhile, family, work, education, a place to rear one's children and a place to rest one's head, all this depends on the decisions of government. All can be swept away by a government 
which does not heed the demands of its people, and I mean all of its people. Therefore, the essential humanity of man can be protected and preserved only where government must answer, not just to the wealthy, not just to those of a particular religion, not just to those of a particular race, but to all of the people. All right, guys, I have no sources to read to you this week because I am the source. <laughs> this is going to be a Q&A slash Would You Rather episode. Therefore, in answer to your question. I am in the thick of fall break with the kids. Anya has a lot going on, too, and we decided let's take it easy for a week and do something fun and light and easy. And one thing that people don't get to hear from me often is my opinion on things because I make sure to never share it. But I think it's fun sometimes to share my opinion in this way. Ryan and I did a little bit of this on the 100th episode, but I thought that I would share some more. Here we go. Okay, this is one of the main questions I actually get asked a lot, and I feel like I answer it a lot, but I still get asked quite a bit. So I'm going to go on and answer it again on this podcast for anyone who's new. If you don't want to hear it because you already heard the answer to this, go ahead and skip 30 seconds or so. The question is, what was it that first drew you to the Kennedys? I, at first, was just absolutely amazed that so much happened within one family. And there were so many like pockets of interesting facts in each and every person. And they all did so much and were a part of so much. And there was just, I mean, glamour and beauty and intelligence and scandal. And I mean, it's like, like, like you can't write their story. It couldn't have been written. There was just so much that was like, holy crap, how did all of this happen? So I think that's what first drew me initially, for sure. The second question I got is, are there any Kennedy conspiracies that have some credibility in your opinion? Mm, that's one of those questions that I really do not answer. Anya, you put that in here. I see what you're doing, but you're not going to get it out of me. I will say, are there any that have credibility? I will say yes. <laughs> that's my answer. And I'm not going to tell you which ones or what it is or thoughts or anything. So, ha. Huh. Ooh, this is interesting. Number three, would the world be different today if JFK had served two full terms? Ooh, that's so hard to say because there was a lot, obviously, in the works that JFK had going on um, that, unfortunately, his his work got cut short. I think that things could have been different, absolutely, over time. Um, I mean, yeah, I think that a, a change in history, a change in the trajectory of our, our country's history is going to change things, no matter who it is or what it is. And I think JFK had a lot going on and a lot of vision. And um, I'm going to say, yeah, I think it could have been different in some ways, for sure. Is there one episode that you haven't recorded yet that you're desperate to do so? Ooh, yes, I have quite a few of those. I, I'm trying to think of one to give an example for. Um... I can't think of a specific example right now off the top of my head, and I don't want to look at my notes. But I will say yes, because a lot of things I really want to cover, but I want to get people on to talk about that thing. So if it's a topic, let's say JFK Library. I haven't done one necessarily about the library because I haven't gotten someone on yet to come from the library and talk about it. So I'm working on that. I'm continuing to contact people and places and organizations and stuff like that. So yes, there are things on my list that I definitely want to cover that I just uh, am waiting for the right time or the right person to talk to about it. Number five, this is one I get a lot. Do you think that RFK would have won the 1968 election? Yes, I 100,000% think he would have won the election. And I do think that could have changed the course of history now that I think about it. So, yeah. Number six, are there any places which are relevant to the Kennedy dynasty that you would like to visit? I think it would be very interesting to go to Ireland and look at some of their familial spots there. I have not been to the Hyannisport Museum, even though I have been to Hyannis. Um, so that would be really neat to go to. I mean, if I could ever visit the compound, that would be amazing. And Brookline. I would love to go tour their childhood home in Brookline at some point. I was reading online the other day that it's not open until next year. I'm hoping to get up there and be able to visit there. Ooh, number seven. What is the best thing and the worst thing about podcasting? I think the best thing has been the community that's been built. And honestly, I've built so much, like this sounds so cheesy, but like personal confidence because I'm actually super introverted, believe it or not. But it's really been a huge confidence builder to like every week put my voice in a mic and, and, and talking to people that I really admire and interviewing them and 
um, go to events and things like that. It's been really, really amazing for me as a human being and growth and just really fulfilling in that way. So I would say that's the best thing for sure. The networking, the getting to spew out facts about what I love every week and having people really love it and hearing that it makes a difference for them in their week. I mean, it's really, really, really touching. So that's the best thing. The worst thing to me is the tech side. I hate editing this podcast. (laughs) Like I literally hate it. Jeffrey masters the audio, but I go through and chop it. So like if I say, um, too much or make a weird noise or if my kids bust in the room, you know, all that kind of stuff has to be cut out. And I literally dread that part every single week. But I'm also such a control freak with this show that I don't want to give it to anybody else to do it because I don't know if they'll cut out everything that I want cut out or place in sound effects where I want them or whatever. So that's the worst thing, the tech side. Ooh, and rejection. That's been kind of hard. Not not super hard, but my mom's always told me forever, the worst thing anyone can say is no. So always like shoot your shot, ask, you know, go out there. The worst thing anybody can say is no, or in this world, not anything at all. So there's a lot of rejection. I have been told no by a lot of people. I've been ghosted by a lot of people, which that's okay. I mean, it happens. It's business. I'm not, I have zero hard feelings for anyone that has not accepted to talk on the podcast or not gotten back to me. I literally, that totally understand. That's life. But that it's it's hard, especially when you build up hope about it or you think, oh, this will definitely happen. And then it doesn't. <laughs> so that's been an interesting, but that's also been a part of the growth process too, I think. And it just makes it that much better when people say yes <laughs> to coming on the podcast. Number eight, who is the most interesting president to study aside from JFK? Oh, gosh, what a question. I would say for me, FDR. I think it's fascinating how long he was in office and everything that happened while he was in office and his story and history around him and everything in general. I would say that I could dive deepest into FDR. In your opinion, which Kennedy is the best role model? This is question number nine. Oh, you know, I can't pick one particular Kennedy because I'm going to say that there's parts of each of them that is so worthy of being a role model. I mean, of course, some of them are as a whole as well, but I'm just saying they just each had really incredible components to them. So I feel like if you almost take a little bit of each one, that it would make the number one best role model ever. So I can't just pick one. All of them in some ways. Next one, what is your favorite Kennedy quote? That is another really hard question. There's so many that I love, but I actually framed in my house for a while Bobby's quote, and it's the one that says, every time we turn our heads the other way, when we see the law flouted, when we tolerate what we know to be wrong, when we close our eyes and ears to the corrupt because we are too busy or too frightened, when we fail to speak up and speak out, we strike a blow against freedom and decency and justice. I love that one. Number 11, do you think that Jackie was right to describe the Kennedy years as the Camelot era? I think she was brilliant to describe the Kennedy years as the Camelot era. As you guys know, I've spoken about before, I think that that was a genius move on her part to solidify their legacy in the White House. And I think it was a very, very smart move on her part. Number 12, in your 100th episode, you said your dream interview would be Bobby Kennedy. If you could ask him one question, what would it be? Oh my goodness. I have not read these before. This is tough. You know, I think I would just stop and listen to him. I don't even know that I would ask him a single question except for tell me what's on your mind or what you're feeling right now about the world around you. And I would love to hear his response. His very, very empathetic and brilliant response always to those types of questions. So it would be to just listen to him. Okay, next. Do you have a favorite depiction of the Kennedys in pop culture? Well, I think I've shared this before, but I do love Jackie with Natalie Portman. And there's a lot of historical inaccuracies in that movie. I get that. But I think she did a really beautiful job encapsulating her. I also think that Katie Holmes did a really good job with Jackie. Barry Pepper was the best Bobby I've ever seen in my entire life in the Kennedy series. And I guess those are my favorites. Um, there's been some good JFKs for sure, but I think that those depictions that I just named stand out. I, I th- Barry Pepper. I mean, can we just take a second? Like that is literally, he literally turned into Bobby Kennedy. It was unreal. He actually might be my top one out of all of those, but there's definitely been some good Jackies. Is there any topic relating to the Kennedys that you think is either talked about too much or not talked about enough? That Jackie's, y'all know Jackie's my girl. I think that her intelligence is not talked about enough. I think that to people that really, really study the Kennedys, it is. But as far as like, still a news story to this day. It always has to do with her fashion and her glamour. And although that is a beautiful part of her and a wonderful, I mean, she was incredible in that way. I think that her depth and her 
pull and her her brilliance is not highlighted enough. As far as topics talked about too much, I can think of a few. Moving on. Here's three would-you-rathers. Would you rather go back in time where you knew nothing about the Kennedys, so you still had everything you know now to learn and to be excited about, or go forward to a time where you know everything about them. So you're an expert, but there's nothing new to learn. That's challenging. See, it was fun discovering all the new things and not having read as many books as I have or seen all the documentaries I have. That was fun to still have so much to explore there for sure. And I'm by no means an expert at this point. And I, I don't even think that there would ever be nothing new to learn. Even if I knew everything, I still don't think there would be nothing new to learn because I feel like there's so many chapters to their story. But I think go forward, even though it's been fun and the discovery process still continues to be so much fun, I think it would be wonderful to know every single thing about them and be able to recall the dates and times and places and people and all the things off the top of my head. Now, I don't have the retention or capability to ever be able to know even close to every single thing, but I think that'd be pretty cool just to be able to answer any question or know anything at any point. Last, would you rather question, would you rather be a part of the 1960, 1968, or 1980 campaign for the Kennedy's Democratic nominations? By far, 1960. I think that would just be a really neat campaign. And, you know, television is introduced and uh, the hype around everything. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick 1960. All right, that was fun. And that was kind of longer than I thought it was going to be. Sorry if... Uh, I was a little long-winded on that one, but it was, I like answering questions. <laughs> so um, I don't get to do that too often about myself or my opinions on things. So I think it's really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my answers as well. If you have any differing opinions, share them with me. You guys know I love to hear your thoughts on different things. So DM me on Instagram at Kennedy Dynasty. By the way, I'm almost at 10,000 followers. And I would really love if you're not following me yet to go give me a follow because that'll be kind of fun when I reach that number. I mean, I'm not really, I don't really care about the following and all that kind of stuff, but it still is fun when you've worked on something for so long to reach a milestone like that is exciting and plus it just continues to spread the news about this podcast and and what i'm doing over here so i would really like for you to go give it a like the best early christmas gift you could ever give me ever 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 or halloween gift if that's what you want to call it is to go and rate and review this podcast guys please go give it five stars and if you haven't yet please write a positive written review about the show it helps me so much as you guys know and wow what a gift that would be thank you so much I did a really big interview, like a dream interview last week, and I'm very excited about it. It will release in a few weeks, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out when that drops. I promise you will want to listen to it. Make sure you go get your Kennedy Dynasty merch in my merch shop. Lots of cool stuff there. Subscribe to the newsletter so you know exactly what's going on at Kennedy Dynasty, and I will talk to you soon. Come on and vote for Kennedy. Vote for Kennedy. Keep America strong. Just keep throwing up, Kennedy. Just keep throwing up.